everyone, and welcome to Let's Study Abroad March edition, part two held today, 25th of March, 2021. I'm very glad to see all of you here participating in our event with great interest. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Didi, as your master of ceremony today. And as always, before we start our session, I will read some rules that you have to follow during today's event. Starting from the first rule, the participants are required to enter the Zoom meeting room 15 minutes before the scheduled time. If they are unable to join on time, they must inform our contact person. Second, the participants must change their display name to name underscore student name or NRP. You can see the example shared by our committee in the screen. Taylor, before the breakout room session, you have to change your display name by adding your partner university name at the front. Third, the participants are encouraged to use the virtual background, which we have attached to the email. If there is any technical problem, it is allowed not to use the virtual background. Fourth, the participants must mute their microphones during the session unless allowed by the MC or moderator. Fifth, the participants have to turn their camera or video on as a requirement to get them for it. Sixth, if there are any questions, the participants can drop the question in the chat box using the, the available format sent by our committee or use the raise hand feature and wait until the MC or moderator allows them to speak. Seventh, the participants have to fill out the attendance and feedback form as a requirement to get stamp for it. And please note that each link will be closed 30 minutes after being shared by our committee. So now please fill the attendance form and it's shared by our committee in the chat box. We will not be able to fill it once the form is closed. Uh, for some of you, maybe this is your very first time in attending LSA. So let me explain what are going to do today. Let's Study Abroad, or LSA, is a discussion and consultation session by ITS University partner universities from all around the world and for all student levels. We had held the previous LSA on part one with other three of our partners. Now, in this LSA March part two, we have representatives from other three universities, also our partners. The first one is Ms. Hana Ting from National Sun Yat-sen University, Taiwan. The second one is Ms. Pranita Kaukert from King Mongkut Institute of Technology, Latgerbang, Thailand. And last but not least, we have Dr. Anna Opalka and Dr. Dagmara Bodja from University of Applied Science in NYCA, Poland. Now, I will read our agenda today. First, we will have an opening statement from Senior Manager of ITS Global Engagement Office on Promotion and Mobility. And then each partner university will share about their institution and their programs. After that, we will have a session that is panel discussion where you will be able to find out more about each university by asking questions that will be answered by all representatives. After the panel discussion, you will enter the breakout rooms. There will be one room for each partner. During the breakout room, you can ask further questions and que consult with each representative. All right, now I will proceed to our first agenda, which is the opening statement from the Senior Manager of ITS Global Engagement Office on Promotion and Mobility, Dr. Octavianti Dwiwahyurini. To go in, the time is yours. Okay, thank you so much uh, for the MC for opening this uh, wonderful uh, session. Uh, to our honorable guest, Dr. Anna Opalka, the Head of External Relations Department and International Cooperation Office, and also Ms. Dagmara Bojia from the University of Applied Sciences in Nisa, Poland, and Ms. Pranita Kokert, Foreign Relations Officer, Office of International Affairs, King Mongkut Institute of Technology, Latgrabang, Thailand, and also Ms. Hana Ting, Student Exchange Program Coordinator, incoming Office of International Affairs uh, from National Sun Yat-sen University, Taiwan, and also to all communities and students. Good afternoon and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the ITS Let's Study Abroad. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to our esteemed partners from University of Applied Sciences in NISA, King Mongkut's Institute of Technology, Latgerbang, and National Sun Yat-sen University for their willingness to join this event. As a university that is keen to be a world-class university 
Having students to experience international exposures is essential for ITS. For the past five years, we have sent 2,800 of our students to 33 countries around the globe to participate in several internationalization programs, including student exchange, short program, and internships. And according to the QS 2021 edition, ITS outbound mobility is the strongest in Asia. Indeed, the global pandemic has made it difficult for us to do the physical mobility. However, it also has been proven that the pandemic does not stop us to strive in creating innovations in mobility program. IDS is thankful for the incredible supports from our partners as the mobility program will not be possible without the strong partnerships between us. The LSA allows ITS students to connect with ITS international partners and help them to identify international programs that suit them. I am very hopeful that ITS students will take this wonderful opportunity by actively engaged in discussions and asking questions regarding living costs, academic life, accommodations, and so on. I'm gladly to open this exciting program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bu Oyin, for amazing opening statement. We hope that this session can motivate us to participate in future programs held by our partner university. Well, without any further ado, the next agenda is a presentation by Ms. Hannah Ting as a Student Exchange Program Coordinator, Office of International Affairs at National Student State University, Taiwan. To Ms. Hannah, you may start the presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh... I'm going to play a pre-recorded video about my presentation. So just give me one moment. Hello everyone, my name is Hana Ting and I'm a student exchange program coordinator responsible for income and exchange at the International Office of National San Yasen University, NSYSU. Today, I would like to introduce you to what it is like to study at NSYSU. Uh, hello, Miss Hana. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay, we already hear the, the voice. Okay, so I can mute. From the capital city, Taipei to Kaohsiung, it takes only 1.5 hours by the high speed rail. The city is sunny nearly all year long, with an average temperature of 25 to 28 Celsius degree. It ranges from the coastal urban center to the rural Yushan Range, where modern and traditional cultures are well blended. The university was established in 1980. Though it is still young compared to many well-established universities in the world, it is already one of the five best universities in Taiwan, according to the newest rankings of Global Views Monthly. NSYSU has around 10,000 students, and 900 of them are international students. The ratio of undergraduate and graduate students is almost half and half. The university is embraced by ocean and mountains. 
and I'm never tired of watching these sceneries whenever I go to work. The university is easily accessible by public transportation, such as airplanes, trains, metro, light rail, buses, and public bikes. Rental electrical scooters are also convenient for you to move within and outside the city. There are two semesters. The fall semester starts from early September to late January, and the spring semester starts from mid-February to late June. We have seven colleges, College of Liberal Arts, Management, Social Sciences, Science, Engineering, Marine Sciences, and C1. Every semester, we provide more than 200 English taught courses to international and local students. You will find the latest course catalogs by scanning this QR code. There are some course selection regulations for exchange students. The students are required to take credits between 3 to 25. No transcript will be issued if they take credits under 3. There are five course selection phases to help students better arrange their courses. Flexibility is also given for exchange students to choose courses at different departments, colleges, and study levels. At NSYSU, every 18 course hours is counted as one credit. A three credit course will have a three hours of class per week and a total of 54 class hours per semester. We offer free Chinese language courses for international students, which are four hours per week with three credits. Besides regular courses, we also offer a diversity of physical education courses. As the university has a beach on campus, we are able to offer water sports courses to students. For housing, we guarantee on-campus dormitory accommodation for all international students. If students prefer to stay outside of campus, they can find rental information on the university's website. International students can apply for twin rooms or quad rooms on campus. In either the international dorm or local dorm, international students will only be assigned to stay with international students. As dorms are located on the hills, the natural surroundings and the ocean view nourish students' daily life. The estimated living cost per month is between 270 US dollars to 350 US dollars. The meals cost is much lower than in Taipei. And trust me, great food and delicacies are mostly in southern Taiwan. The Office of International Affairs organizes welcome events and body programs to support our international students. Before you arrive on campus, your assigned bodies will contact you through emails, help you with the preparation for your coming journey. We provide extracurricular activities for international students and local students to blend in. The language exchange sessions and monkey ecological tour are regular activities every semester. For cultural field trips and company visits, we will choose different historical and cultural destinations to visit once or twice a year. We have different student clubs, and I have to especially bring the NSYSU International Dragon Boat team to your attention. Sponsored by the Office of International Affairs, the team is formed by mostly international students, which included degree students, exchange students, and language students. A great chance for you to meet other students and to train regularly twice a week. There are three Dragon Bell competitions in Kaohsiung City every year, and our team has won the championship in the biggest Dragon Bell Festival competition 11 years in a row. We also hold farewell parties for graduating and exchange students at the end of an academic year. In 2020, under the COVID-19 influence, Taiwan managed to maintain a safe state after half a year's efforts. We got to hold a farewell party before the semester ends. We even made a short video to record this event. Allow me to play it for you.
Come to this part, you might be already thinking, hmm, and this wise you sounds like a good choice. Indeed, I'm bringing you more reasons why you should choose NS wise you as your exchange destination. We provide a safe and friendly environment for international students. If you Google Taiwan, there must be lots of comments talking about how nice Taiwan's people are. I'm not saying everyone is, but from the fact that we are the first country in Asia that legalized gay marriage, you know what I'm saying. Studying and living in Taiwan, especially in southern Taiwan, is quite affordable. You can find exotic foods easily around the corner with not even three US dollars. Less than two US dollars for a single metro ticket from the start to the end station or by a cup of coffee. Coffee shops are everywhere, and you have to try the night markets as well. Everything is accessible when you live in the city. Of course, aside from the facts above, NSYSU is a research-oriented university with outstanding academic and research performances and broad accreditations like AACSB in business, and IEET in engineering. If none of these above are enough for you to believe that we are your best choice, take a look at what our former exchange students said about us.
if you're interested in something else, like a shorter program, you can consider studying Chinese with us. Our Chinese Language Center offers regular programs that run every three months. You're free to choose how many terms you want to register. Other than this, there are also summer intensive programs that run for two months. As one of the best Chinese language centers in Taiwan, we insist on keeping class size small. Each class has only 10 to 12 students, allowing maximum interaction between teachers and students. Students with Chinese proficiency have to take a placement test before entering the class and will be placed in the class most suitable for their current Mandarin level. Morning classes develop listening and speaking skills, and afternoon classes provide various cultural activities such as calligraphy, tai chi, sugar painting, and shu lai bao. Students can easily acquire knowledge of Chinese, Taiwanese, and indigenous people's culture. Okay, thank you so much for having me. If you have any questions, feel free to stay for the QA or send an email to me directly. I will be happy to answer your questions. Hope to see you soon on the NSYSU campus. Okay, so uh, that's the presentation video. I'll see you later in the QA session. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Hana, for sharing with us about NSYSU. It's very interesting, but uh, for participants, if you have any questions, uh, please hold it first because you can ask them in the panel dis discussion later. Moving right along, we will have the presentation by Ms. Pranita Kaukart as a Foreign Relations Officer, Office of International Affairs at King Mongkut's Institute of Technology, Latkarbang, Thailand. So Ms. Pranita, the time is yours. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Pranita, your sound is not clear. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello, Ms. Pranita. Could you please uh, maybe uh, use the microphone? Or maybe you can, like, if you're using the... Um, headset maybe you may just using the uh, without headset just go directly to your computer because uh, we cannot hear your voice yes yes it's okay Capone crap Sorry. Yeah. I think it's better. Do you Can hear you? my voice? Yes, yes. It's better now. So clear. Thank you. Yes. Okay, okay. So once again, Selamat Datang, greeting from Thailand. I'm Pranita Gelgut, a foreign liaison officer from Kim Mong Kut Institute of Technology, Rakabang, or Kim ATL. On behalf of Kim ATL, I would like to say thank you for its ITS student and staff to having me today. So it's a great opportunity for us to meet international students and staff during the pandemic of COVID-19. So let's get started. I will start with the video presentation of our university and then I will give you the briefly information about KMITL. So let's get started with the video first. ภายในปี2040ประเทศไทยต้องมีคนได้รางวัลโนเบลนี่ไม่ใช่ความเชื่อที่งมงายแต่คือปณิธานที่ชัดเจนมุ่งมั่นต่อยอดความสามารถอย่างไร้ข้อจำกัด
เชื่อในความสามารถของตนเองและพร้อมร่วมมือกับผู้อื่นถึงเวลาตื่นตัวเพื่อการยกระดับการศึกษาอย่างจริงจังเพราะคุณภาพการศึกษาที่ดีในวันนี้คือต้นทุนสำคัญของอนาคตและการลงทุนที่ดีที่สุดคือศักยภาพของคนเราจึงสร้างสถานที่ให้สิ่งแวดล้อมทางการเรียนมีความเท่าเทียมกันมากที่สุดโครงการ60ปีพระจอมเกล้าลาดกระบังไร้ขีดจำกัดการศึกษาที่ดีสภาพแวดล้อมที่ดีและสุขภาพที่ดีที่นี่เราเรียนรู้จากการลงมือทำเพื่อพัฒนาศักยภาพด้านความคิดเพิ่มทักษะจากประสบการณ์จริงที่นี่เราขยายพื้นที่สีเขียวให้มากที่สุดให้ธรรมชาติเป็นส่วนหนึ่งของนักศึกษาและบุคลากรที่นี่เราสร้างโรงพยาบาลศูนย์วิจัยทางการแพทย์เพื่ออนาคตสุขภาพของคนไทยด้วยความตั้งใจจริงเพื่อสนับสนุนและต่อยอดนี่คือแรงผลักดันในการเปลี่ยนแปลงสู่ทศวรรษใหม่เพื่อคนสจรอของเราและเพื่อประเทศไทยของเราเฉลิมฉลองพระจอมเกล้าและกาบัง60ปีไร้ขีดจำกัดเคมีทีแอลซิกตี้เยียสโกบิยอนเดลิมิตโอเคเคมีทีแอลวอสเอททรบิทซินไนทินสอรี่ซินไนทินซิกสตี้ so now we are s i x years old now and we are the public university in Thailand which mainly focus on engineering science and technology now our university ranking in Thailand is uh, number nine of Thailand and we have a total of A student about 24,000 student in both of graduate uh, graduate degree and undergrad graduate degree and undergraduate degree, and we also have two campus, which the first one in Bangkok, Thailand, and another one in c h u m p o n or the southern part of Thailand. We also have about 2,400 members. It is the supporting staff and the academic staff. And academic unit in our city is 10 faculties and five colleges. And we also collaborated more than 300 partners university around the world. And this is the name of our faculty and the college. And I said that we have We k m t l have the biggest faculty of engineering, science, architecture, and the food industry in Thailand. So, until this, I think you can know about the basic background of k m t l So, I will move to the exchange program that we have bought activity in the past and the upcoming events. Actually, I am the person in charge of inbound student at KMITL. If you have any questions or after this, please feel free to ask me in the Q&A part or you can email me directly as well. So I will separate the exchange program into two parts. The first one is the on-site exchange program and another one is the online exchange program. I will start from the on-site exchange first. Actually, we have mainly two programs. The first one is the semester, semester exchange and another one is the internship. For the semester exchange in semester system in Thailand, we have two semester. The first semester will start during August until December. And the semester two will start from January, January until May. And if you r e interested to join our semester exchange, you can apply now until June. For this upcoming semester or semester one, and another another program is internship. This kind, the theme of the internship program is you can have a chance to do the research or uh, 
have the project with the advisor here in Thailand. So we will match the perfect professor for you. Depends by your research project or your topic, your integrated study plan. So you make sure that we will match your, your study plan with the right professor. If you would like to know more the application process or more information about the exchange program, please feel free to visit our website or at oia.kmgl.ac.th or maybe you can email me directly as well. So let me introduce you about the semester exchange mode. In KMTL, we have more than 29 international course. If you would like to join us, we have the international course that were taught 100% in English. In this field, in, we have all, all of the School of Engineering program, the business school, the faculty of IT, the International Academy Aviation Industry, the Food Industry and Architecture. And moreover, we also have in the undergraduate programs as well. If you're interested, you can look for the course or the study plan in our website as well. This is the example picture of the student activity. You can go to the lab laboratory, you can enjoy with your friend in the laboratory and after you finish your, your exchange period, we will confer you the certificate of the attendance. And we also have the activity with our university and our, with our university student as well. The student of the international student and our student can have the a kind of activity together. This picture is for 2019 activity, we call it a sport day. In KMITL, we will have the biggest number of international students during August, mainly come from Japan and French. Yes, France. So next one is we also have the field tip together with our student as well. And KMITL have enough classroom, laboratory, and a co-working space for our students to have time to discuss or meet each other in our university. And this is the uniform of undergraduate student. And we also have the student club. If you, the student want to join, of course you can join. And we offer the sport facilities medical facilities equally for all of the students. And this is the estimate expense that I come uh, and I calculate for you, but maybe you can use less than it or more than this. It depends on your lifestyle is around 15,000 Thai baht for one month. Uh, I will give you uh, information mainly in the three main parts. The first one is for the dormitory. If you stay in the KML, KMTL dormitory, the monthly rate will be around 3,000 Thai baht per person. And for the meal, if you eat inside the canteen, the campat canteen, you will pay around 30 uh, or 50 baht something if you eat outside our campus, it will be higher, but not too much, but depends on your restaurant that you join. And another one is for the transportation. If you would like to go to the city, inside the city, it, it depends on your destination and your kind of transportation as well. And another expense that if you come to Thailand during this period or the pandemic of COVID-19, all the exchange students must undergo a mandatory quarantine at alternative quarantine or ASQ facilities for 14 days. And the cost range is from, this will start from 28,000 plus plus, it's depending on your shoes as well. And next I will pass to the part of 
the exchange program online, actually we have two main activity. The first one is the internship. The internship is the same theme of internship on site, but you we will use the online platform instead. So you can discard or you can miss your professor online and you will give, you will receive the certificate for sure as well. You can request that you like to join us for one month or three months. It depends on your nominate letter. And another one is the upcoming program that we will have soon is, is called KMITL Virtual Workshop. This program is aimed to having all KMITL students and international students to discover a new knowledge outside of the classroom together. And the student on this program can choose the session to join. You not you not, no need to join all of the session. It depends on your interest. If you interested, we you can apply from now on. And the certificate that we will give you after the session end will state by the participate by the participation. So if you interested, please register and join us together. So thank you again to having me for today's session. And if you have more information or you would like to know more detail, the university detail or the application process, you can visit both of our website. The first one is our university website and another one is our international office website. So I look forward to meeting all of you in the soon, the close future. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you very much, Ms. Pranita for our insightful presentation about game ITL. Uh, now I want to remind the participant again, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the discussion session later. Well, the last presentation today will be brought by Dr. Anna Opalka as the head of the External Relations Department and International Cooperation Office, and Ms. Tapmara Boja as the representative from University of Applied Science in Nisa, Poland. To Dr. Anna and Ms. Tapmara, the time is yours. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, is my voice okay? Yes, everything is okay, Anna, we can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, first of all, uh, let me greet all of you and thank you for this uh, possibility of uh, presenting our university and our city to uh, your students and uh, professors. And uh, uh, Today we would like to invite you to our uh, small but uh, quite vivid city uh, in uh, press start. We would like to show you um, a video and uh, uh, I would like to ask for uh, some assistance from your site because we have some troubles with uh, uh, sharing the screen uh, with uh, music with video. So if possible, uh, one of organizers could share it with uh, participants. Is it possible? Yes, yes, Anna. Uh, can yes, we so, yeah, so I we have two links. Chat. I put the first link to the chat. So could okay, you okay. please uh, share the first? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, Kelly, could you please help the Dr. Anna and Mr. Marat to play the video? Thank you. Kelly, on board. Thank you. Uh, the sound, Kelly, please. Could you please repeat it and click, click share sound? From Greece. Excuse me, excuse me, could you stop it for a while? Okay, okay, right now. Uh, because uh, I thought it's the first link, but uh, it was sent differently. Just on the chat, I have just sent the, the first one. So if I can ask you. Okay, okay, Kelly, could you please check again the chat box? Okay, so the first one is already there. Do you have it? Stuck? Uh, excuse me, uh, could you share it? Dagmara, you haven't sent it to the chat. Kelly, uh, 
to everyone. He, yeah, I have to everyone. organizer. Okay, so the second is the first. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Kelly, can you please and help? Thank you. Okay, what happened? Hello, have you stopped the film? Hello, what happened? It stopped okay, somewhere. Wait, wait the moment. Uh, our committee will play it soon again. I don't know what happened.
Okay, thank you very much for sharing this. Uh, now I would like to uh, say a couple of words about uh, our university. Just a second. We open the connection link. Okay, I, I hope you see the presentation. Is that okay? Yes, everything is okay. Okay, so uh, let's welcome everyone to University of Applied Sciences in NISA, a place where modernity and passion create a new quality. Uh, as you've seen in the photo, we are quite a small city comparing to other cities uh, uh, in Poland uh, around. We are located uh, very close to the Czech border, the south of Poland, and the closest biggest cities are uh, Wrocław and uh, Opole and Katowice. So those are the places when you can uh, reach uh, by uh, very frequent uh, communication devices. And Nyssa uh, is, has the heritage of the Silesian Rome, and uh, it used to be a beautiful uh, county of bishops in the past. Uh, after the war, of course, uh, many things changed and Nyssa was much destroyed. Uh, however, uh, in the city and around, we find uh, a lot of uh, evidences of the past history. Beautiful uh, churches, Nyssa has them many, uh, and beautiful names nature which you can really have fun uh, from during your stay uh, in Nessa when you choose it's uh, as a destination. Here uh, you, he, you see some reasons uh, why to study in Nessa. Uh, of course uh, location uh, is not central in uh, uh, Poland but it gives also some other chances. It means that uh, you have much closer to other cities in Europe. Uh, represent Poland. Poland is a part of European Union and uh, once being in Poland you can also enter all those countries. You can uh, uh, experience uh, the culture not only of our country but also of European uh, heritage. So uh, I think uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, uh, concrete reasons uh, why you should go to Europe and just to feel a little bit of different culture. Uh, at our university, we really can, can express individual approach to the student. We are not very large university, uh, so that we have time for every student. So this relation between student and teacher is uh, based on the master ma to student, uh, uh, you know, relation, and it gives us the space to talk, not only to teach or to gain knowledge but also to point us points of view and it's time for that. And we have a wonderful atmosphere there around. And uh, uh, to tell you the truth, even if people don't speak uh, languages sometimes, they uh, smile to you. They are really um, helpful in uh, um, talking to you or giving you a smile at least. And the atmosphere is also uh, nice because we leave the, uh, without rush. We just uh, uh, try to be in a particular moment. We don't need to spend hours in uh, uh, traffic jams and any other situations. So that's why this atmosphere uh, brings a lot to the student's life. Uh, in the same time, you also have the low costs of living and studying and uh, even uh, uh, comparing to Europe, this is the first point, but also comparing the whole Poland. In a bigger city, you will spend uh, twice as much money for your accommodation and subsistence for sure. So everything is available uh, just uh, for a very, very low price. Great localization, I mentioned, close to the border, close to the uh, nature and beautiful uh, borderland. University of Applied Sciences in NESA, it's, uh, as the name says, uh, Applied Sciences. So uh, we are not uh, bringing the uh, general education to uh, scientific reasons as much, but uh, uh, we also have uh, the studies uh, on the three levels. Uh, we teach for engineer title, bachelor title, and master 
semester, uh, depends on the faculty. Uh, at the moment, um, uh, we have uh, something about uh, 2,000 something students. Uh, it used to be a time when we used we, when we had 5,000, now it's 2,000. And uh, we uh, just uh, released uh, about 40,000 of graduates. The staff members' numbers, it's about 300, of which 200 are lecturers. We are consist of seven departments and 14 faculties, which I present in a minute. Of course, we uh, have full or part-time studies and uh, deliver to the students the practical uh, profile. Here you see the faculties, faculties one by one. So we teach on the Faculty of uh, Architecture, where we provide education for conservation and monuments protection and light architecture. Next is computer science, uh, where we provide education on computer networks and systems security, computer games and multimedia, computer systems and uh, network, and internet systems. Then we have management and production engineering, and uh, we uh, provide both bachelor and master studies here. So uh, the following specializations, automatization of production and mechatronic systems, quality engineering, innovations and projects management, production and services management. Emergency medical rescue. Now we are moving to the medical world. We are very good in uh, those two, especially. We have uh, specialistic medical rescue water specialization and tactical medical rescue uh, for this department and also for the department on nursing, uh, where we cooperate very closely with our ho university hospital and uh, provide education on bachelor and master studies. Especially nowadays, this is uh, one of the most important faculties and plays an important role in the region because our students are uh, helping in these difficult times also to, the, to deliver the um, help to, to unhealthy people during COVID. Cosmetology department, uh, these are more connected with health. Uh, there we have two specializations. It's chemistry and cosmetics technology and specialistic cosmetology. Our students uh, afterwards, they are not only opening their own uh, private practices, but also uh, assisting in surgeon operations and in the hospital uh, on different levels. Then we have dietetics uh, and here three specializations, clinical, sports, dietetics and psychodietetics also very big importance in Europe uh, in, uh, nowadays. Next is psychophysical development, uh, where we have two specializations. One of those is personal trainer and psychophysical recreation. And we come to economical ones like finance and accountancy. Uh, it's a specialization corporate finance and accounting and financial control. And we accept students here from all economical backgrounds. So uh, when looking for subjects and possibilities, uh, you can also enter this faculty when we have economical fields. Internal security and crisis management. Uh, it's uh, also on uh, two levels, bachelor and master. And uh, here we have the following specialization is economical security, information systems security, criminology and criminalistics, penitentiary management of security systems. And one of our best and favorite faculties, which is very representative, uh, is jazz and popular music. It's an artistic faculty uh, and uh, you can choose there uh, one of the instruments mentioned uh, uh, here in the presentation or you can study on specialization of solo vocal, as well as artistic education in jazz and show music. And one of the technical parts, specializations here, it sounds verization. So these are the people who deal with the light and voice and all the uh, technology during the organization of uh, different concerts and performances. Then we have philological faculties, uh, English philology, when you can uh, study English language teacher uh, specialization or uh, translative uh, specialization uh, connected with business English. And German philology, multimedia in German language teaching, translation in business and German language, general German philology. So you can uh, both uh, in uh, in both cases, you can be a teacher or you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, experience yourself in business uh, after finishing these studies. 
didactic, and didactic and research infrastructure. Uh, we are quite new university with modern technology. We've been established in 2001. Uh, so our didactic base is very impressive. And every year we are receiving awards and grants for developing this infrastructure. And this is one of our most important aims and objectives because we are a practical university. That means that we have to teach the jobs to the uh, uh, to the situation that students finishing our university already are ready to go to the market. So that's why our laboratories are full with uh, different uh, technology and uh, some of those you have mentioned there, like for anthropometric or uh, psychophysical or chemical, biochemical, uh, cosmetology, and uh, telling you the truth, we all the faculty have their own laboratory. So for all uh, faculty, you can uh, spend time, uh, you know, training yourself on the on these uh, studios, and uh, also on the equipment that is provided by uh, the university. And other examples like sound realization studio, which is very uh, nice, uh, and of course uh, different laboratories for languages. As a support for the university uh, activities, we also do research in some centers. Uh, the first center is a research and educational center for art conservation and restoration. And next is regional knowledge transfer and innovative technology center and research and education center for sustainable development. Uh, recently, we also opened very modern medical simulation center with uh, uh, many of the uh, devices which are really helpful in learning some, uh, you know, functional issues, especially in this COVID time when not all of the students, especially for first years, can go to the hospital, so they can really uh, learn in a very uh, natural environment uh, in the simulation center. And also we have virtuality and visualization center. The informatics infrastructure is uh, quite developed and uh, uh, we have everything that modern university has nowadays, so we cannot imagine the university without all electronic access to uh, different, uh, uh, you know, services uh, for the students. So we also have an index decanate, a library, a services, a student's cards, and also we are connected with wireless broadband access to internet uh, through our buildings. Uh, as being a practical university, we introduced something additional for our students. So every student finishing our university and also every exchange student when they uh, join us, uh, they can learn some additional competences. And this program includes, uh, firstly, drones implementation and practical training. Drones are quite an uh, urgent topic uh, recently, so every student can uh, or do it uh, just uh, as an introductory course or get the a full certificate of the advanced course in drones uh, operation. So uh, all the students from different faculties are using drones for, of, for different purposes. So even languages, even uh, you know, uh, internal security or uh, all others, not mentioning computer science or, uh, or, or some, uh, something like that. So uh, being there, you can really experience uh, this possibility. The second is rules of small and medium management. And uh, uh, here we teach students to be ready after school to open directly the uh, private companies. Uh, the third one is extended uh, foreign language training, so every student can, uh, can choose a third language for free, so they are learning two of them during studies, and the third is also for free for them if they like, and these are sometimes uh, those who are uh, not that much popular, like uh, Czech, or sometimes it could be also Chinese if we have a group, or some other languages, so this is uh, quite interesting. Uh, we uh, deliver to our students um, study visits, which means that every student during the uh, they, uh, school years, they have to go to the companies that cooperate with us uh, to see how they operate, to see the facilities. So this is also obligatory and we organize it as a university and students have the unique chance to meet uh, the employer uh, before they go to the market. Uh, and also, uh, which just uh, disappeared, we also teach the first eight uh, help for the students, so we are training them in that case. International Cooperation Office, which both Dagamara and me, uh, myself, we are representing, deals with uh, cooperation, wide cooperation. We At the moment, we have more than 200 blood agreements 
with uh, more than 130 partner universities and 45 partner countries. This is quite impressive in, uh, uh, you know, when uh, comparing the size of the university. So uh, every student has a unique opportunity to go abroad. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, international cooperation, we do different things uh, like uh, Erasmus uh, to actions, uh, which one one is dedicated to students from European Union, the second worldwide. Then we do also partner projects and programs, uh, language courses, international promotion, and conferences and trainings, especially in this era, uh, they are available online and uh, access accessible uh, with any chat. So uh, please consult your international office which one you can participate in the future. Be uh, the standards. Uh, for our uh, Uh, sorry for the loss of connection. I guess analysis connection. Miss Dagmara, you're here, Doctor Dagmara. Yes, I'm here. Probably ah. there is a, a small problem with the connection. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Maybe while he's come back, should I play the second video? Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. Probably she will come back in a minute. But in the meantime, may I ask you to to share the second video? Yes, please? yes, yes, yes. I'll do that. Thank Wait you. Wait a second. Thank you. Okay, uh, all short man. I'm Phil Castrotti and I come from Kosovo and I'm a third year student and I study economy. I've been here for four months now on my exchange program is a Erasmus Plus. Hi, my name is Dulce. I'm 20 years old. I'm studying international business. I'm also doing my internship here in the International Cooperation Office. Hello, my name is Angel. I'm from Spain. Good morning, I'm Ritika Ladha and I'm from India. Uh, hi, my name is Eduardo. I'm from Spain. Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Cristina Mabrico. I am from Greece. I came here for my Erasmus studies. Uh, I could probably say uh, where these were uh, four months of uh, the best four months of my life since I've been able to explore some cities in Poland and also meet some uh, young people here, uh, young students, and which makes the city of Nisa really alive. It's been a very exciting journey. I've visited so many places. I've met a lot of people which have been great. Um, Spain, from Turkey, from Greece, and they are all so kind. Also people from here that are very, very kind. Really like uh, exciting to meet, uh, to be here. 
and I also like the cold weather a lot and the beautiful colors of the city and I really would encourage everyone to try to give it a try uh, I really think you would not regret it as for example I loved it really much and I think the, the most important thing in, in Erasmus is to know great people and, and here in Nice I have known a, a lot of people, international people, I have a great friendship here. I think in general uh, Erasmus studies are a great opportunity for everyone and I think uh, um, the University of Nisa gave me that. I made the new friends, I made new people. Uh, the thing I liked about it the most was the weather and the lakes. And talking about our university, uh, I like how they've given students like us and ve a very good exposure and how they're all very supportive to us. Thank you. The University of Applied Sciences in NESA is a modern, public, professional, scientific and educational institution with practical approach. It provides education on 14 fields of study, technical, economical, medical, social, and philological. I like most from NISA is the family atmosphere we, we have here. Rapidly developing, cooperating with the region, with the highest educational standards in educational programs and equipment, as well with the great internationalization strategy, it offers all the students and partners the best professional and personal experience. Nice is a small town, but although uh, you, it's like um, you're like a family here, so for me this is the best thing. So you get to know everyone better. So that's about me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Discover yourself with the University of Applied Sciences in NESA. You are the one you are waiting for. Okay, thank you. I'm not sure if Anna is here. Anna? Uh, still not here. That so I, I guess yeah, but, but as I checked, it was the, the last slide of her presentation. Yeah. So sure. uh, now, if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer. Okay, so we can process for the next session, Dagmara, right? Of course. Yeah, yes, yes. of course. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, Didi, could you please uh, go to the next agenda? Uh, that's my ah, sorry, Anna is here. Hello, yes. Anna. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, Didi, you may go to the question and answer. Well, thank you, Ms. Mayu. Uh, okay, everyone, uh, we've already heard the presentation from our amazing three partner university. And it's time for our next agenda, which is panel discussion. You can drop your questions in the chat box using the available format. And please ask general questions regarding to the three partner university in this session. But don't worry, you will be given the chance to ask more detailed questions in the breakout room session later. In this panel discussion, it will be led by Mr. Wahyu. And for your information, Mr. Wahyu is the manager for contact and mobility program at ITS Global Engagement Office. So Mr. Wahyu, you may take the lead. Okay, once again, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Hana, Ms. Pranita and also uh, Dr. Anna and also Ms. Takmara. Rusofa, can you hear my voice clearly? Yeah, it's clear, Ms. Okay. Oh, it's not here. Okay, so uh, before to begin, I would like to introduce that uh, NSGS of Taiwan, National Sun Yat in Taiwan in Kaohsiung, and also uh, KBTL in the Bangkok, Rakabang, and also um, uh, University of Latin in Nista, we already have sent student ITS student before, like uh, in 2017, we sent uh, Brian Afif Bayhaki from biology department to do one semester exchange in, in National Sun Yat-sen University. 
Taiwan, and then we also sending many uh, students came to ITL before Thailand in many programs such as Magang Ormawa in 2016 or Student Association Internship, and also sending we are currently of many I guess students join join the lab intern uh, virtual internship at ITL Thailand as well, and also before Corona. Uh, there is Brigitta and Zakia also go to the Erasmus Plus Student Mobility to the University of Applied Science in Nisa, Poland. Okay, so uh, I hope that everyone know that uh, all the partner that we invite today is actually our uh, partner. So you may using uh, chat box, yeah. But if you still didn't have a question in chat box, I will uh, check. I will take the question from the the stand that you sent before during the registration. So, so allow me to read the first question. So, so the first question is um, to everyone, yeah, to Mr. Mara, Miss Hana, also Miss Pranita. Uh, science. Uh, most of our students is also Muslim. So may, there's some question that do you have like some some room? Yeah, if our student go to the uh, like go to exchange over there or at least three months more than three months here yeah, to go to your university. And do, do, do you think that they still uh, can find like some room to pray and can find some halal food or like can some something that uh, they can um, also still living well over in, in your university, in NCSU, in the Nisa or also in the chemical. So that's the first question from my student. So maybe uh, the first, uh, maybe I would like to give Miss Hana first to answer the first question. Hana, Miss Hana, please. Yes. How about uh, in Kaohsiung, Taiwan? Hi everyone. Uh, we do have prayer rooms in our on our campus. There are four to five prayer rooms at the dorms, library, and College of Engineering and Management. We have a lot of Muslim students on campus as well, uh, enrolling okay. in our degree programs. So there's not uh, much problems with the, the diet of Muslims. And it is also, also very easy to find halal food uh, in the Kaohsiung city. So there's not much to worry. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. Anna. How about in Kamitel, Thailand, Ms. Pranita? Yes, of course, we also have the prayer room and in each faculty and also in the library, central library as well. And the halal food you can find in the canteen. We have the halal food all of the canteen in Cape Town. Because uh, particularly Thailand as well. As well. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. Uh, how about Inisa? <laughs> yeah, so the culture is totally different and uh, uh, we used to... Uh, hello? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So uh, we, we used to have students before uh, that uh, been Muslims and uh, we provide them with the uh, room in the dormitory for the disposal, so uh, that's mm -hmm. it. And the second thing, of course, not at every uh, at, not at every restaurant you can find halal food mm -hmm. or, uh, or something like that, but uh, more and more it becomes available. So uh, depending on the uh, situation and the needs, we can provide it at least one, two restaurants uh, when it could be provided for the students. Okay, thank you so much for the answer, Miss Hana, Miss Pranita, and Dr. Anna, and also for the one who just asking the question before in the registration form. I would like also to inform you that you can hear also the the our student before, like for example, how we did a live during the in Nisa, <laughs> yeah, you can find in our uh, in here YouTube, and also there is also some student from uh, Indonesia from uh, who, who just experienced in NSCL and Kamitel in our YouTube as well. Okay, so there is a question, question uh, in the chat box from Heru Budi, 
Ya, Mas Heru Budi, uh, I guess from, from your student ID, you are master student, right? You would like to deliver the question or should I read your question? Yosef, Mas Heru Budi. Oke, okay. okay, so Mas Heru Budi, uh, yeah, I sorry. think this is... Oh, Oke, okay, okay. please, Mas Heru, silakan. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I sat on the video because this is uh, a remote area, so the signal okay. is not not good. Okay, yeah. Marcelo, uh, please. About the, uh, about the procedure of the university during this uh, pandemic COVID-19. At the first time we come to the area of the university, is there any procedure to quarantine? Uh, all of the all of the student on how, how long we will be quarantine and start to study after that thank you okay thank you thank you so much mas heru could you please again uh, mas heru from which department you are mas uh, technology management ah, okay from the technology management so uh, the magister program master program okay so right. maybe i go to the anna first yeah Regarding the quarantine, Miss Anna, uh, Dr. Anna, could you please tell me about the quarantine procedure and also maybe if you have the information how the much at least they need to spend for the quarantine procedure in Poland? Thank you. You know, the situation is changing, so it depends on the particular moment. And uh, uh, at the moment, uh, all the students that study at uh, Polish universities uh, are not forced to stay with quarantine. Uh, mm -hmm. They need the negative tests for sure to enter the Poland, uh, but no one knows who's gonna, what's going to happen. Today it's a bad day for Poland because probably we will have the hard lockdown since today because we exceed the next number of uh, illnesses. So probably uh, the traveling now, it's not recommended. Uh, anyway, uh, we believe that in uh, uh, you know, autumn time, it will be much better and uh, that uh, we can accept students. Even now we have 30 of international students. So they stayed at the dormitory and in dormitory and also at the university, there are special places uh, when we can isolate them. And in this, this case, if it happens during their stay, Uh, we are uh, taking care of all, all the students. We are bringing them food. Uh, we are supporting them and uh, allowing them to participate in uh, online classes. Okay, Dr. Naso, I guess, okay, so can I assume if uh, after July, for example, uh, this fall letter, if the open border, so still possibility for our ITA student to go under Erasmus, right, to the NISA? Yes, of course. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Anna, for the explanation. How about uh, Miss Hana in Taiwan? How the quarantine procedure, especially in Kaohsiung? Okay, so uh, as some of you may know that Taiwan still is in a relatively safe state. So we've never uh, experienced lockdown. So uh, if the borders are open for students to come in, they will have to stand 14 days, two weeks in a quarantine hotel, and then another seven day in the hotel as well, but it doesn't be, need to be uh, the quarantine hotel. The, the seven day self-health management is an extra measure for, uh, for all of us to be sure that, uh, that the students can return to the campus safely. So right now, it'll take around 21 days for the quarantine measures. And then uh, students will have to take another negative test before they return to the campus. That's about it, about 21 days. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Hana, for the answer. Now, how about in Thailand, Ipranita? Yes, in, in Thailand, you have to past the quarantine in uh, about 14 days because during that period, the student have to pass the negative test at the hotel as well. And then after that, we will uh, pick up the student from the hotel to the Kimachiao dormitory directly. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you so much. So I hope the answer from the, our speaker is quite clear for my, Mr. Harold, yeah. 
this far you still have a uh, further question related to the uh, the preparation before go to the university you can ask it later in the uh, breakout room okay i think uh, we will we will have one question again first before we move to the breakout room because i saw from the list there's too many questions is to uh, related with your age university so now i just having uh, for one last question so uh, they, there are some questions actually from our uh, mostly from our master student and from the last year student. Uh, is there any opportunity for the last year student or master student to have uh, kind of join uh, join the profession or like they going to university for like only basis and they have, will have join the profession with some professor in NSIAO in NISA or in Chemita? Do you think is there any possibility for that? So that's the question. Can you get my question, everyone? Uh, okay. Can can I repeat? Yeah. In, so you final mean that? Year, final okay. year student, undergraduate, or master, they come to your university only for or thesis. Only okay. for thesis. Yeah, and then they they expecting that they will get joint supervision between professor in IPS and also in your university. Do you think it's possible? Okay, so maybe the Pranita, <laughs> you may uh, go first. Yes, of course, it's possible for KMITL because it's similar to our program, it's called internship program. But the student can come here to join the research with the professor for sure. Okay, so which means that they need to like some, some do administration like uh, working together between professor in ITS and professor in KMITL. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Miss Pranita. How about Inisa, uh, Dr. Anna? Okay. So in our case, it's also possible, but it must be agreed in uh, uh, advance. Okay. So uh, because we have to find the professor that will be able to take such a uh, student. Okay. So, so which means that they need to contact you first in order yes. to match the professor. Okay, yeah. Dr. Anna, thank you for the answer. So how about in, in uh, NCU Taiwan, Ms. Hana? Yes, we also have the visiting program for students to come to our professor's lab for research. Yes, but uh, students will need to uh, contact with the professors first and then apply, from, apply to our online application system in advance. Okay, so the procedure which means that they get approval from professor first and yes. then they go to your office, Miss Hana, something like that, right? Yeah. Or no application. Okay. So I, I guess all the all the general question, yeah, I think it's like already uh, representative, uh, all of you, all of your question, yeah, regarding about the, how the Muslim can be uh, survive in the your university and also the possibility for final year student or a master or postgraduate student for like only come for the working with the thesis and also uh, for the COVID, yeah, the quarantine date and so on. So now we are moving for the breakout room. Yeah, please kindly, um, Didi, could you please help me to, to inform the participant to prepare the breakout room? Yeah, sure, Mr. Rayu, and thank you for Mr. Rayu for leading the panel discussion. Now to further find out about the university that you're interested about, we're about to divide you into three breakout rooms. The first room is for National Sun Yat-sen University. The second room is for King Mongkut's Institute of Technology at Karbrang. And the third room is for University of Applied Science in NISA. We can change your display name into university name underscore student num your name underscore student number as sent by the committee in the chat box. Okay, hello everyone. Good afternoon. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Indri and I am the volunteer of Ita Global Engagement and I will be your moderator in this session. Okay, thank you so much to Ms. Hana Ting. We are very grateful to you for willing to share with ITS students 
about National Sun Yat-sen University Taiwan through this Let's Study Abroad session. Okay, uh, let me remind you again about Miss Hannah Ting. She's the Student Exchange Program Coordinator for Incoming from Office of International Affairs, National Sun Yat-sen University, Taiwan. Okay, in the previous session, you guys already got insights about NSYSU and also about Taiwan as well, and the opportunities to join program in NSYSU. Thank you so much for the presentation, Ms. Hannah. It was very informative and interesting. Okay, so... For the next 20 minutes, you can ask more detailed questions related to NSYSU and also consult Ms. Hannah as the representative of NSYSU. Okay, if you guys want to ask question, do not hesitate to convey about anything you think is still unclear or perhaps you need more explanation related to the previous presentation. You can just use the raise hand feature or type your question through the chat box using the format name underscore NRP underscore question, or as you can see the example sent by our, by our committee in the chat room. Okay, everyone, do you have any question? Very good chance for you to ask any questions that you would like to know. Okay, I'm sorry. I think my internet connection is not really good. So I think I will continue the session. I see uh, Farah Adiba raise uh, her hands. Maybe you can introduce yourself and, and then deliver your question. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Farah Dibastiawan from Marine Transportation Engineering 2019. In here, uh, oh, I want to ask you about the courses or the program. Uh, yes, uh, the courses in NY, NSYSU in Marine Sciences, in Marine Science. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mm, this is a very big question because uh, in our College of Mar Marine Science, there are different departments. So have you ever like searched for information in our College of Marine Sciences? No, it's my first time to uh, hear about NSYSU. Okay. okay, then let me... Firstly, find the information first, because there are like lots of different departments in our College of Sciences, uh, Marine Sciences. Uh, sorry, what's the question, Anna? Maybe I can help you. Oh, oh what's uh, the question? Maybe the student can. <laughs> yeah, Mara, could you please repeat the question? Okay, uh, so uh, I want is Hannah to uh, to explain me about marine science. Ah, okay. Um, marine transportation engineering. Student. Okay, okay. So I will assist Mahana because uh, in 2017, I will go to the NCSU and meet the College of the Marine Science in APA EA 2017. So, uh, so first of all, uh, the first marine of science in NCSU is have a very great uh relationship with Surabaya, especially with ITS and University Brawijaya, because both of us have a department of uh, faculty of marine technology. So in general, the marine science is uh, in SEO is more closely to the marine engineering of ITS and biology, because in biology, they have marine science as well in our biology in ITS. Yeah, but also they have some, some courses related with the naval architecture and ocean engineering. But when we see the similar, maybe it's 100% is so related with the marine engineering and marine science. When we talk about, you are, you are from marine transportation, right? 
So which means also like combining between management, business, logistic, and also the maritime, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, you can find uh, some some courses in over there. I suggest you for the marine transportation, maybe uh, the lab internship is more suitable because I need to have mentioned that in Taiwan, in Kaohsiung and in Miss Hana University is so great about maritime, maritime facilities. So that's why when I come there or 2017, about four years ago, uh, we have some, some cooperation related with the maritime. And they, because in Kaohsiung is actually near from the sea, yeah? If you, is it right, Miss Hannah, right? When I go there, it's so, we can see so many uh, sea, the beautiful tour related about the sea. So the maritime is perfect. Yeah, uh, a faculty maritime of ITS is perfect if you would like to student exchange or lab internship with there. But if you tell about the marine transportation, I guess um, maybe or uh, two or three courses is similar. But that's why I suggest you maybe if you uh, really would like to prepare, I really um, suggest you maybe you can wait uh, until in the fourth year, fourth year, maybe for example, in semester seven, you can go to NMCU for lab internship. So you can, the lab internship, because you can sit in the class while you're yeah. doing your project. And like I mentioned before, the connection in college management is so great with the, like some facilities in uh, maritime in Taiwan. Yeah, and the costume uh, winner is like Surabaya as well. So you can access, go to like the harbor or something related to the maritime facilities in Taiwan or in SSU. I hope it can answer the question. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the information. Sure. I think you, you've mentioned nearly all of it. Yes, uh, yes. It, yeah, basically uh, our campus is just right beside the, the, the sea. So it's very easy and convenient for us to do research and also uh, to have uh, develop all the technologies. So if you're interested in our uh, courses in the, the Department of Marine Sciences, I'll suggest you to uh, firstly look into uh, our website. There are all the information you need. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hana. <laughs> Ms. Hana and Mr. Wahi for answering yeah. my question. Sure. Who would like to, oh yeah. Okay, thank Didi, you so much. Indri, okay. Okay, thank Please. you so much for the answer uh, from Mr. Wahyu and also from uh, Ms. Hana. Uh, I think I'm going to move on to the next question that already uh, type on the chat box from uh, Mr. Heru. Uh, he asked about what about the mosque in the area of NSYSU? Uh, I think the question is uh, we already got, uh, I think Ms. Hana already explained from the previous session about the place to pray and NSYSU. So maybe you can uh, explain again again to Ms. Uh, Mr. Heru. Of course, uh, we do have uh, different prayer rooms. Uh, some are at the dorms and some are at the library, College of, Ed College of Engineering, College of Management. It's uh, because it's not really a very big campus. So it's easy. very easy for you to search for a prayer room. And like mentioned before, we have a lot of Muslim students, so it is not difficult for you to, to find uh, halal food on campus, also in the city. And also uh, our dorms, there are shared kitchens yeah. in our dorms. So if you would like to cook by yourself, it is very easy for you. So no need to worry about the diet. Yeah. I want to add this Hana, if possible. <laughs> so in also calcium, they will have, they have PPI calcium or like what we call Indonesian community in calcium is quite big. Mostly the student is from Brawijaya University, yeah, 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 who study in NSCSU for the political science or social sciences in the master or PhD level. So when I was there in 2017, it's not really, really um it's not like it's not like expensive like Taipei. Also the weather is but similar to like Indonesia, and it's easy to get like, you know, the, the halal food or like 
if you would like to pray in like some some place, for example, you go to the chapel and then you need to stop by prayer. Yeah, uh, Taiwan, in, I, I don't know, in Kaohsiung is already know mainly about Muslims, so it's easy and they can understand. Oh yeah, we would like to take a prayer. You can go to the first, they will show you even they will need to spin uh, uh, the problem only uh, about different uh, language. Yeah, so you need to, uh, at least you can uh, put in your uh Google translate it at least, <laughs> but don't worry, yeah, don't worry about the uh, the access for the Muslim. It's easy. I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for Mr. Wahyu and also Miss Hannah. It was a very clear explanation. Uh, for Mr. Heru, I hope that I answer your question. Okay, I will move on to the next question also from the chat room. It is from Deva Marisa. Uh, she asked about, I'm taking applied science of instrumentation engineering, but I want to take a different course in NSYSU. Are there any change for it? Maybe for uh, Ms. Hannah, you can answer the question. Uh, basically, for the exchange program, uh, we will still uh, ask the students to choose a department that best fits uh, your major in ITS. But of course, it is very, uh, we provide flexible course selection options for exchange students. You'll be able to choose courses from different departments, colleges, or study levels. So even if you're enrolled in a department in the College of Engineering, you can still select courses in maybe management or social sciences. Uh, it's, it's quite flexible. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Hannah. Uh, for mm -hmm. Deva, do you have any feedback question? Uh, I think I would like to, uh, okay, thank you so much for the answer. Uh, I think I also want to add uh, about the answer for the question from Deva. Uh, actually, in ITS, for the exchange student, we are take, uh, depends, uh, not depends on the department on ITS, but uh, yes, it is uh, very uh, better if, uh, if the department from you have in ETS is the same that the department you want to take exchange and the NSYSU, but uh, you have to uh, keep in mind that for the exchange, it is depends on the courses that you want to take, not uh, depends on the department. So if you, uh, for the exchange, you have to uh, see the courses, is that a match with the courses that you have an ETS, so that's why uh, that's, you can uh, transfer the credit uh, from that courses. Okay, I hope uh, that is answer your question. Uh, for the other question from the participants, do you have anything to ask? You can just raise your hands or type the question on the chat box. Okay, maybe the students still preparing for the question. I think I would like to ask the question also from the students, but they already uh, sent the question that uh, from the registration form. So I would like to uh, ask some of the question that asked by the students in the registration form. Uh, it is about uh, the scholarship, uh, do you have any scholarship in the NSYSU for maybe the exchange program or uh, yes, for any program in NSYSU, maybe uh, do you have any scholarship for that? Okay, for exchange program, because uh, you don't really have to pay any tuition fees as an exchange student at NSYSU. So we don't really provide uh, additional scholarship for your exchange program. But if you're interested in taking maybe degree programs in NSYSU, uh, we provide uh, scholarships for degree students, especially for master students and um, PhD students. 
uh, for example, if you're a master's student and you're granted for the, the scholarship, your tuition can be waived. And for a PhD student, uh, not only your tuition fees can be waived, you will receive 15,000 uh, subsidy per month uh, as an additional scholarship. And if you're a really excellent student, your accommodation fee could be waived as a PhD student. There are actually different kind of uh, scholarship for you to choose. The scholarship I mentioned above is just inside NSYSU. There are also Taiwan scholarship uh, given by the government for you to choose. So if you're interested in the scholarship, you can uh, Google our uh, the Office of International Affairs, NSYSU, and all the information about the scholarship are uh, on the website. Okay, thank you so much. It was very clear explanation, Ms. Hannah. Okay, for another student, do you have any question? Uh, okay, yeah. I see the question from the chat box from uh, Brian. Uh, Brian asked about, uh, I think uh, he have two questions. The first question is, what kind of the unique habit and something fun that the local students do in the holiday or in the campus? And for the second question is, what is the most favorite engineering department in NSYSU? Okay, for Ms. Hana, maybe you can okay. answer the question. <laughs> Okay, about the unique habit. <laughs> I think it depends because uh, there are lots of different students. But for most of the local students, they, uh, they tend to do sports on campus because we do have a lot of different sports facilities on campus. For example, we have our own gym. We have fitness centers too. And we have a very big uh, track field that you can see the ocean and tennis court, pool, baseball field, basketball and volleyball field. A lot of different choices for you to choose. That's mainly for the, the sports. And because it is also very easy for you to get into the city. So I guess some of the students will do hobbies like everybody else do like go to the theaters go to the karaoke and maybe visit the 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 museums and there are too many things for you to do and um as uh Kaohsiung government is uh promoting is developing the the arts and culture uh, in Kaohsiung. So it is also very easy to see a lot of different exhibitions and maybe music live performances. So basically you don't really have to worry about what to do during holidays. And also because uh, in Taiwan, we are a island country. So you get to see, we have a lot of high mountains. So a lot of students would choose to hike as well. And there are many beautiful sightseeing spots for you to explore as well. Water waterfalls and 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 beaches and and camping on the mountains. There there are so many different options for you to to explore. If you would like to know more, you can visit the website of the Taiwanese government as a tourist bureau. There are many different uh, information for you to, to explore. As for the second engineering department, as the engineering, uh, the College of Engineering is also one of our, uh, I mean, the, the excellent, one of the excellent uh, colleges in NSYSU. So basically, uh, for example, for the electrical uh, engineering and computer science and engineering will be one of uh, two of the most popular uh, departments. Uh, also, there are the materials and optoelectric uh, engineering. 
I think I think these these are uh, the most popular departments in College of Engineering. Yeah. But also there are a lot of different choices and, and I think uh, every of them are are like top 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 in the Taiwanese universities and all of them are accredited by the IEEE. So if you're interested in our College of Engineering, you can also Google the, the, the uh, website of the university and you get to see more of the information of each department or institute. Okay. Okay, thank you so much for the answer, Ms. Hannah. I think mm -hmm. you don't have to worry to spend your holiday if you are exchanged on the NSYSU because you got a lot of facilities for sport also that you can have and you can experience a lot of uh, another you mentioned what the ex ex exhibition that it is easily to find in NSYSU and also we also can do a hiking if you guys really interested in that kind of activities okay for uh, another question do you guys have another question maybe it could be the last question in the session okay thank you so sorry thank you very much for the answer uh, i think there is no other question from the students uh, unfortunately also the time for this session has ended and thank you for your enthusiasm. And also thank you very much to Miss Hannah for the answer. Uh, last but not least from Miss Hannah, do you have something to add for the closing statement? Okay, uh, I would like to thank everyone in this room that uh, the time you've spent in our presentation and asking questions and um, if you would like to inquire more information about NSYSU, feel free to Google the website of NSYSU or the Office of International Affairs website. There will be all the information you need, not just the application, but also the departments, institute and courses, and also the facilities on campus. And um, feel free to, uh, I will leave my information to, to the committee so that if you have any questions, feel free to email me directly. So again, thank you very much for inviting me for the session and I wish you a very good evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Hannah. Uh, okay, dear participants, that is all from me as the moderator in this session. I am apologizing for any mistake that I made during this session, and we hope that all of your curiosity has been answered. Uh, please return to the main room to continue for the next agenda. Thank you, everyone. You can uh, back into the main room to continue for the next agenda. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Breakout of METL Thailand. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Rifki, and I'm the volunteer of ITS Global Development. And this session will be your uh, for the next 20 minutes. Everyone can ask questions about KMITL to Miss Pranita. Uh, to ask question, you can use the chat box using the format of name underscore energy underscore question or uh, as you can see in the example that will be given by the committee or you can also use the raise hand feature to ask directly to Miss Planita and uh, well we waiting for the question we have 
Oh, we have already a participant that will ask question. Uh, here from Valencia, the question for Miss Pranita is, is the topic object for research plan has to be about KM, KMTL or can be anything? So can I know your faculty, Miss Valencia? Can uh, I'm from industrial engineering and and I see that KMITL has uh, something like business development in there. Yes, of course. <laughs> you can send the application with your interactive topic because our university is the biggest engineering school. So if you interested in any topic, please send me. Yes. So after that, I will find the perfect professor for you. Oh, so the topic object is not always have to be the K K M E T L. So it could be any the object. Yes. So yes. Any object. Oh, okay. You're into it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, thank you, Valencia. Thank you. Uh, while waiting for the next question, uh, I already have the question from the discussion form. So the question is for about lab internship. Here the question is, are there any special requirement for lab internship at MITL? Is there any document or anything special requirement? Requirement? Yes. You mean uh, on site internship or online or both? Uh, maybe both. Because, both. Yeah. Yes, actually, we have the same process. Uh, if you would like to know uh, in the detail, maybe I will send the information of the application information process to Mr. Wayu. Or maybe you can look at the OIA website, but I can tell you now. The first one is the nomination letter that you have to inform your uh, university first that you would like to exchange with us. So the first one is the period that you would like to exchange. And another one is the online application in our website. And in the online application, you have to give us more detail about your integrated topic in detail because the professor and or the lecturer from KMTL will reach your profile and then if you have the same interest they will be your supervisor in the future and another one is CV we would like to know which experience that you passed before or which course or which project that you do, you do before you did before and the last one is the official academic transcript that we would like to know your back background of your knowledge before we have a kind of the consideration from the advisor at KMTL. Okay, thank you, Ms. Paranta. Uh, for me, yes. 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 Uh, how about the participant? Is there any question you want to ask? Please don't be shy because this is a rare opportunity <laughs> to ask directly yeah. to Miss Pranita as the from the KMITL. Okay, we have already participant that raising hand. Uh, Verdi Pradipta, you can introduce yourself and ask the question directly, please. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunities. And uh, I have several questions actually to ask you. Um, so I am actually for, from the interior design department and I am interested to take uh, interior architecture department, which is in the faculty of architecture in the KMITL. And I think from what I see, interior architecture is for students only is using Thai language for the courses. And for me, how do I like can transfer my courses? Do I have to take 
still interior architecture but still using Thai or I should choose international program which is the architecture international program for the undergraduate. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I, your question is you would like to take course in Thailand in English, right? Yes. But your major is in design? Yes, interior design. Yes. As you see, we have one course in KMITL architecture that we teach in English, which the architectural intelligence and design thinking. Yes, this program we will 100% touch in English. Okay, so I should. Uh, yes, you can choose this one. Okay, yes. thank you very much for the first questions. And I have still one more question. Uh, for the internship itself, I think it's more like the research plan. Or is there any internship for interior or architecture? Because we are actually based on project. Like, I mean, we are like working in the studio and we design something or it's just only for the research only. Uh, for internship, right? Yes. Yes. The first thing that you can uh, offer that which is your interested project or if you have your own project you can uh, inform us and if we have the advisor that uh, specialized in your project he will help you for your project or maybe he will ask you to help him for his project as well or maybe you can collaborate collaborate together Yes, and we also have the studio. Don't worry about it because we is the big faculty of we are the, the big faculty of architecture, and we have more space for you and more facility if you would like to join us. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you, Ferdi. Okay, is there any question from the other participant? Uh, if there is no question, now I will ask the question from the registration form again. This is about the, is there any difference in education system at university level in KMITL? Like uh, the final test or Ah, the grading system, right? Yes. Yes, it depends on the faculty. But we also do have the midterm exam and final exam. But in which faculty, in, in some faculty, the students have to pass the laboratory test as well. And maybe the research is depend on the faculty. And the grading system is 4.5, 4.0 grading system. You have the question of point zero rating. Okay. Yes. Is there any other participant want to ask? Uh, I see Daniel here asked me directly to the direct I message. So I will give more information now. Uh, in the first, we we are on the second semester now, but in the first period, maybe two months earlier, we have to study online because of the pandemic of COVID nineteen again. But now all students come back one hundred percent to stay on site at KMGL now. So don't worry. I think that we have the possibility to accept the student if you would like to join us for next semester on August or maybe for the internship in the future I think we can now okay thank you Ms. Pranita. Valencia. Valencia is straight ahead yes we have uh, but <laughs> there is a participant that the um, direct message me directly dear okay. Daniel we want to ask Ms. Pranita. Okay, thank you, Rifki. Uh, thank you, Ms. Pranita. Uh, I would like to ask a question. So, if the pandemic is over and when we can go direct to KMITL, 
uh, I would like to ask the living cost in Thailand. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, KMITL is located in Bangkok and it's in the capital of Thailand. Yes, yes. Consider considerably expensive to live uh, to the living cost when uh, we go to KMITL or is there any alternative? Actually, uh, for your university, because we are the partner, the student do not to pay the tuition tuition fee at all. So you have to pay only your expense living the living expense. And I, as I show you, I, I can I show you the presentation again? Excuse me. I can share my screen, right? Yes, yes, you can share. Okay. I'm here. We'll assist you if there is any difficult. Okay. Question. As I showed you before, this is the estimate living expense in Thailand in one month. You can pay less than this or maybe more than this. It depends on your lifestyle. If you're shopping too much, maybe the, life, <laughs> the living expense will be higher than this. But I think it's around 15,000 is okay for every student. Because if you living live inside the dormitory at QMTL and eat at the canteen and have some trip outside, I think around uh, 15,000 is enough. Yes. So that's what? including of the dormitory, right? Yes. yes, it's including the dormitory, but it's include the, the state canteen. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, because if you come to Thailand or maybe other country in this period, you have to pay more about the quarantine. Yeah. Is the okay, I just would like to add, Viprajita, if I may, is it okay? I would like to add the explanation about the living cost. Yes. Okay, so yes. Uh, Daniel, yeah, the, the, the one who delivered the question, and also everyone. So you can see that Viprajita already give the, the one Indonesian rupiah is equal with the uh, 0.0021 or one Thai baht is like exact as about 400 rupiah 400 rupiah one ta one baht one baht yeah um when i go to the chemical and also based on my student experience before because i've many times go to the latrabang first of all latrabang is close to the airport um yes. another airport yeah uh, of I already forgot the name of the airport, uh, Don Wang and Sufarna Bumi, Sufarna Bumi Airport, yeah. And Sufarna Bumi Airport, you just go direct with the uh, railway, <laughs> railway, yeah, just like you need about 30, 50 baht, if I'm not mistaken, is I is the last time I go I using the, uh, public transportation. Uh, also, the um, I need to mention because uh, chemical in the Lakrabang, uh, not in the center, not, not really in the center of Bangkok, yeah, it's actually Bangkok is so big, yeah, it's about four times of big than Surabaya. So the the they mentioned uh Misana mentioned about yeah, 30 until 50 Thailand baht. Yeah, but sometimes if you go to the 7 Eleven, you can, you can go you can go you can get the cheaper. <laughs> yeah, if you eat yes. halal food in the 7 Eleven, it's close to cheaper. But uh, also I need to mention that the price dormitory in Lat Krabang is quite affordable compared to another university in Thailand. I mean, another university of ITS partner in Thailand. Yeah, I need to mention as well. Yeah, and also uh, you may also share the room. Yeah, like uh, there's quite biggest uh, Muslim community uh, because they're from South Thailand. South Thailand who study in Chemical. So you don't need to worry uh, also about this. And yeah, so approximately still still quite same what uh, like you, you got in Surabaya, the only uh, pay, uh the only fee that you need to add is for the quarantine i think that's, that's all thank you thank you mr Wayu. <laughs> yeah okay thank you Mas so miss valencia right <laughs> yeah. yeah yes yes <laughs> and miss panita so uh did uh valencia mm -hmm. you raise mm -hmm. hand before or do you want to ask question or not yeah, I want to ask a question. So, uh, before you say that, uh, if uh, right now Thailand is already like a hundred percent, the student the student goes to the university. So, uh, does it mean that the internship uh, 
is available not online because yes. all I see yes it's all all I see but but mm -hmm. <laughs> however if you i i suggest if you want to uh, join the internship it could be more than one month because you have to quarantine 14 days right if you stay only one month it means you can stay in Kematia only 14 days or 15 days later so maybe it will be great if you uh, exchange with us more than one month yeah so currently I, I'm, I'm I just announced about two days ago uh, the virtual internship first for the July August and September intake uh, after this, I will discuss with the Pipranita is possibility for go to ITS student go to Thailand because the last time I go the only problem is only flight flight problem, yeah. Uh, because I guess that in July August still a holiday time, and is it also good for the student who join the lab internship as the KP? So maybe I will consider to open the offline science. We already send the semester student to Korea. I guess I can send students as well to the Thailand. Uh, I think they will leave that soon after the Eid Mubarak in Indonesia. So uh, I will inform you later, but I will need, I need to check the academic calendar because uh, one of our concern is only about the changing uh, the academic calendar in ITS, go back to the previous. So I think it's a, a bit difficult for us. Yeah, but if the committee mentioned that they can uh, receive offline student, after this I will ask permission again, so I can announce re-announce, so the student can choose between virtual or go to the offline. Open tab. Actually, we have the Taiwanese student. We ah, okay. call us uh, from I uh, since the January. Ah. For the semester exchange, so now we have three students now in Thailand. <laughs> Okay, 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 so, okay. Great. And we received nominate nomination from France as well for the next upcoming semester. Ah. The problem for our student is the embassy. It's depending yeah, yes. on the embassy as well that they will. Okay, <laughs> you can go come here or not. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, let me consult with the Thailand embassy in Indonesia. And if they agree, I will inform you and you can open the offline exchange and let it see. But for a moment, I guess I still offer the virtual one. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it can answer Valen Valencia. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank Mr. Wayu, thank you so much for the information. It's really helpful. Okay. So I go to a Burfra room. Priski, please. Yeah, in the last minute. Okay, thank you. Uh Maybe last question, Mas Mahyu. Okay, so we have a question from the registration form or and the participant, participant want to ask directly. Yes. I think no one want to ask, okay. I will yeah. Maybe you can send email later to me if you have any question. Yes, you can send an email to me. Look forward to seeing you all at Kimatio soon. Okay, here is the last question. Is there any kind of small program or activities that available for international students while studying? Maybe like uh, clubs, clubs, or certification like that? Yes. Uh, actually, we have the virtual exchange that I share you in the last slide that we will uh, we is will be on during this next next month. Yeah, I will share again. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, this one. This one is a, a kind of the virtual workshop that all students can join and they can they, they can choose decision to join we don't you don't need to join all of the session just only your interesting session and i will i will give you the certificate by the participation after our program so if you're interested maybe we can have fun together next month and 
actually our university student will join this program as well. This will be a great opportunity for you and our students to meet each other during this situation together. We will put, we will try to put all of our specialized at KMTL in the session in five days. So please join us. <laughs> and also the staff, you are or you are also invited to join if you want to. So I already sent this file to Mr. Wayu. If you want it, maybe you can ask to him later, or maybe I will post this one on our website as well. So this is the upcoming program for Kimetio online. Yes. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kaita. So everyone who want to join the program, you can ask Mas Wahyu or directly send email to yes. Ms. Kanita. So because this session has ended, thank you for thank you for your participation and also thank you very much, Ms. Pranita, for the answer and the and the explanation. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you, everyone. I'm apologize if there is any mistake for me. And now, please, all of you can go back to the main room. Use the leave breakout room. Don't use the leave zoom, okay? Okay. Terima kasih. Thank you, Ms. Panita. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, please wait a minute, everyone. Uh, hello, Zakir, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, you may start. Okay, okay so hello, everyone. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Zakir. I am the volunteer of ITS Global Engagement, and I will be your moderator to lead our discussion in this session. Thank you so much, Dr. Anna and Ms. Dagmara for taking time out of your busy schedule to join this event with us today. Dr. Anna and Ms. Dagmara are the representative of the University of Applied Science in Nisa, Poland. Hello, Dr. Anna and Ms. Dagmara. How are you? Hello. 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 Anna, we cannot hear you. Okay, what about now? Oh, yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, does my voice clear? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll just continue. Okay. So, in the previous session, you guys already gave insight about the University of Applied Science in Nisa, Poland, and opportunities to join the programs. So, for the next 20 minutes, you can ask more detailed questions related to University of Applied Science in Nisa. Our programs you can join. Or maybe those who previously haven't had the opportunity to ask questions and are still confused, do not hesitate to just ask the question using the raise hand feature or send it through the chat box. Let's take the advantage of this session to get as much information as possible about the University of Applied Science in Nisa, Poland. 
so that later you will not be confused anymore when willing to register for the program. So for the participant, you can ask the question from now. Okay, I see Firman Jahrais his hand. Maybe you can start to speak. Okay, thank you, Kamali. Am I audible? Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say thank you to uh, Dr. Anna right, and Ms. for the presentation. And my name is Firman Shah Muhammad. I'm currently a fourth semester undergraduate civil engineering student. And my question is, during the presentation, I didn't see anything related to civil engineering, any program or department related to civil engineering. So is in the university does not have a civil engineering department or program. And thank you. Uh, Anna, are you going to answer? Yeah, I, I have some trouble. So uh, in our case, we do not have plain civil engineering courses. We only have architecture. However, you can choose courses from civil engineering there. Depends how much it should cover of your learning agreement. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Anna, for the answer. Maybe is there any other question? Okay, do we have any other questions? Um, maybe while we can other participants to ask, I ask a question. So, uh, uh, it, so this question was previously asked by the participant on the registration form. The question is, what kind of study in Poland does the lecture session, case study, group discussion, or others? That's for the question. I'm sorry, does my voice clear? Could you repeat, please? Oh, okay. The question is, um, what kind of study in Poland? Lecture session, case study, group discussion, or others? So that's... Okay, Zakir, maybe I would like to help to uh, reinform yes. the question. Okay, so maybe I think uh, the uh, participant wanted to ask that uh, how is how is it the study in Poland? Is it like uh, the lecture session or does it uh, more focus in case study or group discussion or maybe you can elaborate more? Uh, in fact, it depends on the field of study and the program of the of the studies. So, uh, on some of the programs, we have a lot of practical classes. So, uh, especially at our university, uh, because we are a practical university, so we have a lot of practical classes as well as lectures, and uh, also six months of the traineeship for each student. So, uh, in fact, it depends on the field of study and university. Sorry, I have a problem with the connection probably. No, no, it's all right. I can hear you clearly. Okay, so thank Some, you for the answer. Stop, uh, uh, yeah. Thank you for the answer, Dr. Dakmara. Maybe Zakir, you could continue. Yes, uh, thank you, Noor. So maybe from the participant, is there any question? OK, 
Okay, I see here there is a question from Ikhwan. Oh, I'm sorry, this is an... The question is sent to me, so the question is from Ikhwan Nurifki. The question is, is there any special case for Erasmus or the, or the Erasmus or the are in the same regular class? Maybe I will just send this question to everyone. Does it okay, uh, Ikhwan? Uh, maybe you can shoot my question because my internet is so low. Oh, and... okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that's for the question. Same regard with. Uh, so, in fact, it depends also. Now it's uh, a little bit more difficult uh, because of the online classes and because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, usually, uh, especially for students from English philology, German philology, uh, students uh, are in the same regular classes with other Polish students, also with the practical classes of finance or management. Uh, so we are trying to, to do them for, for both Polish and our Erasmus uh, plus students. Uh, but sometimes it happens that uh, some of the classes, some of the lectures, some of the meetings with uh, our teachers are just uh, dedicated to our Erasmus plus students. So, uh, so how it looks like uh, now. Now it's also a little bit more difficult uh, because mostly we, our students uh, meet our teachers online on Teams platform. So uh, usually they get on their own, their, their own classes for Erasmus plus students. Okay, thank you for the answer, Mr. Farah. For the participant, is there any question? Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, thank you for the time. Uh, I was so interested in the Erasmus scholarship that offering to us before. Uh, can could you tell me about the scholarship offering? How, mu how much? Yes. Yeah. The uh, so Erasmus scholarship for now for students who are out of the European Union is eight hundred uh, euro per month. Uh, plus uh, extra travel cost, uh, 1,500 uh, 1, uh, euro. Uh, so usually it's around 4,000, 4,500 euros for the full semester. Uh, usually we uh, send those money uh, just in free rates. First rate, it's around... Uh, 20% uh, before students come to, to Poland, then another 50% just, uh, just after a student arrives to Poland, and uh, the, last, uh, the last one just before students leave uh, NISA. So uh, it depends on the students. We can send it to the private account, uh, just Indonesia or uh, Indonesia one, but we also help students with our Polish accounts, which is sometimes more uh, which is better, in fact, because the costs are lower and the students don't have to pay extra taxes for that. Okay, thank you for your explanation. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, maybe I want to ask something about Erasmus. Uh, yeah. Uh, what kind of tests uh, we have to pass if we want to get the Erasmus scholarship to Europe? Uh, in fact, uh, the recruitation uh, is at your university, so uh, you need to ask your international office what kind of uh, uh, regulations, what are the procedures uh, are there, and what kind of tests you need to pass. Uh, from our point of view, of course, we need to know that you know English language at least on the B2 level. Uh, we need to know that you are just after the first year of your studies. Uh, and this is the most important thing what we need to know. And uh, if there are any other extra tasks at the university and during the recruitment process, uh, it's uh, just connected with, with your international office and it's a procedure of your university. 
Okay, thank you for your answer. Yeah, thank you for the answer. Maybe another question. So maybe uh, I want to ask a question. The question is, is there any kind of small programs available for international students to do over there while studying, maybe like uh, clubs? Like maybe uh, playing music clubs or basketball clubs and anything about it. Yeah. Yes, of course, they are. We have uh, a lot of uh, sports possibilities. Uh, if you let me, maybe I will uh, show you something. Uh, and I will share the screen. I didn't have too much time at the presentation to, uh, to show it. But at the moment, I just open uh, the slide presentation and I will show you something. Just a second, it works. So, uh, okay. I will share the screen. Do you see my screen? Uh, yes, it's clear. Okay, okay. So uh, in that case, as you see, we have different interfaculty units. And what's next? Where it comes here? Just a second. Yeah, here we have twenty-six sports sections and uh, nineteen student scientific circles, which extend the knowledge of different subjects. Students' union, Hoyer, when you can think different languages. We have also discussion film club, integration trips, interpersonal trainings and so on. And in terms of the uh, sports uh, activities, um, we have um, the most popular at our university is uh, the, the volleyball and the table tennis. And we are very good in this and we are achieving some championships there. But also you can do different other starting from uh, defense sports like you can do boxing or something and finishing on chess or something lighter or walking the mountains or something like that. So. So that's it. So yes, uh, thank you for the answer. I guess it will be fun if I could join one of the club. Yes, so we go to the next question. It's from Alifa Yudianto. Uh, when will the exchange program registration be open? So that's our question. Takamara? about it are you there okay so uh the registration yes are you there yes i'm here yeah okay so could you tell us something about the deadlines and the uh, available so, places so in fact uh, for the next semester we do not have uh, any available places with the ground uh, so with the full scholarship of Erasmus plus program but of course we are open for every student who would like to come to our university and in and that case if you decide uh, we can also support you somehow so we can help you in uh, finding cheap accommodation or even uh, uh, you know uh, you know suggest something so if there's uh, anyone strictly interested we can really deal with that and uh, try to lower the costs because from Erasmus this year uh, we have uh, zero grants for students we finished yeah but regarding the deadline uh, we should get all the documents from your international office till the end of the june Sorry. I still don't get it. Can you explain more? Again? Maybe. Okay, what do you, what more do you want to know? The the what the when the program is registration be open for? 
So in fact, the registration is still open and okay. it's all open all the time, but uh, we should get all the documents till the end of June. In the end of June, okay, I get it. Thank you. So thank you for the answer. So for the next question is from Arifa. Uh, is there a double degree program for electrical engineering and for management and production engineering? Is there for IT management? Maybe that's for the question. So it's the same situation like with civil engineering. So the engineering at the production department uh, has some subjects from automatization and uh, uh, some other fields of engineering. So it depends how many subjects you will find. You have to consult their website and there you have available courses and see because uh, we are not choosing students by the degree very, very often, but uh, by the courses that we can uh, give. Thank you for the answer. Or, or maybe you want to add some more? I only want to tell that uh, most of the students that we receive, we receive them at the computer science department. We receive them from uh, production management and also business and finance. Of course, languages behind that. But uh, what we do at our university, you don't need uh, to keep strictly to the courses dedicated to the specific direction, I mean, direct, uh, faculty. You can choose from variety of courses available. So even if you are on uh, uh, production management or engineering, you can choose courses from computer science. It's allowed. So uh, you have to consult the whole base of those courses, which could be uh, in your curriculum. And then I think you'll find something that will cover your CV and uh, uh, will uh, have, give you the chance to uh, get CTS points uh, in number that you want. And one more thing I would like to add, because I have just uh, checked it, uh, and uh, I need to tell you that we'll have one place uh, with the scholarship for autumn semester. So one person can come with a total grant. Okay, so that's a good information, because the total grant, the Gemara, is 750 it's 800, euros per month. No, 800. It's 800, okay. 800, 800 per month, yeah, plus travel, extra travel cost. So it's quite a lot uh, comparing to the cost of living there. Because as Anna mentioned, the uh, dormitory cost around uh, 100 euros. So where is it for you? Anything else? You can also consult your students. We have two students and the international office has their uh, data. So probably they will answer with pleasure uh, the questions that you have, how it was there, how they survived, <laughs> yeah. and they've been one of the best students there. So I think <laughs> that uh, they all think. Okay. Is there any difficult student uh, question, Dr. Anna or Ms. Dagmara from my student? I'm here to assist you just in case, is there any difficult question? No? <laughs> Okay, uh, maybe just would like to, to, to explain a bit to my student that uh, there's also another possibility you come to the NISA without Erasmus Plus, yeah, uh, like just for regular, regular uh, free mover example, or like Dr. Anna mentioned before uh, about the possibility if later you're already in the final year, you can go to like only come to work for the testes, the laboratory, and also we're still waiting uh, the good news, yeah. So tomorrow, for information that almost the ITS staff will go to the vaccine, including myself, get the vaccine, the first vaccine. So I guess we are ready actually go to the open the border soon. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I guess uh, the past semester maybe if there's any student, especially from IUP student, would like to go to the NISA, uh, uh, will please let me know. Yeah, uh, for a moment for the. Of all opportunity in NISA, you need to consult not to myself, but to Ms. Cahyani. Ms. Cahyani is a staff who working with the Erasmus Plus, yeah, but I will assist you later after they will uh, complete the document to NISA and they will agree some agreement. I will assist you later for the process pre departure and so on. Yeah, uh, a bit a bit different uh, management. So when you go to the all the partners from Erasmus, even the programs in Erasmus still under uh, Ms. Cahyani, uh, duty, not myself. Yeah, you so you need to ask to Miss Sayani at Erasmus at ITS. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Ya. Zakir? Yep. Uh, thank you, Mas Bayu, for the assist. So, uh, unfortunately, the time for this session has end. Thank you for your enthusiasm, and also thank you very much, Dr. Anna and Ms. Dagmara, for the answer. Uh, maybe from Dr. Anna or Ms. Dagmara, do you have something to add for the closing statement? Just thank you very much for this invitation and uh, wishing you good health, all the best, and that we meet somewhere in Poland or in the future. So all the best for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Anna. Maybe from Ms. Dagmara, do you have any closing statement? No, thank you. I also would like to say thank you for this uh, great meeting online. And I really hope that in the future we'll meet personally because I'm also preparing myself to come to Indonesia. So maybe one day when the situation will be better in the whole world. It will. <laughs> It will. Thank you, Miss Anna and Miss Dagmara. So once again, thank you, Doctor, and for participant. That is all from me as the moderator in the session. Please return to the main room to continue the next agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, uh, because this semester we just shocked that uh, it has global engagement is one of the verificator or or actually myself, yeah, who verificator all the verification, all the opportunity from the overseas as your extracurricular credit. However, Thank you very much. Well, before I close, I want to appreciate greatly to our representatives from each partner university today. You have shared a lot of opportunities which motivate us to do more and more for internationalization and achieve the global standards. Therefore, we have already prepared a special gifts for our partners. Maybe the committee can help me to share. Uh, certificate is for National Sun Yat-sen University. The next one. Next one uh, is for King Mongkut's Institute of Technology, Latgrapa. Thank you very much. And the next. Uh, the last but not least, uh, thank you very much to University of Applied Science in NISA.
Okay, so our very last agenda is we will have a photo session. So for that, I want uh, all of you who have turned your video on, please turn it on and show us your best minds. Okay, the committee, you can help me to screen, the screens to the screen. Okay, Kelly, could you put help in, Kelly? Yes. And Lily, please, Kelly. Okay, start. we have two pages here. The first page, I will count to three. One, two, three, smile. Okay, move to the second page. One, two, three. Okay. Well, great. Now we have finished all of our agenda today. I also want to thank to all participants for your presence and enthusiasm. Please fill the feedback form so we can improve future events. We would greatly appreciate it if you gave us honest feedbacks. The link is shared by our committee in the chat box and I will remind you again that filling the attendance and feedback form are requirements to get them for it. And please note that each link will be closed an hour after being shared. Thank you very much for the day. It was a very informative event that gave insights and encouragement to all of us, and I hope to see all of you in our next event. I'm apologizing for any mistake that we made during this session, and we hope that after this, you'll be much more motivated to participate in internationalization events. And I am DT, as your Master of Ceremony signing off. Thank you all, and see you in other events. Okay. You can also check the recording of this event later in our YouTube channel in ITS International.